Hi, my name is Ryan. I am the warranty specialist over here at Volkbike, coming to you live from headquarters with yet another how-to video. Uh, today we're going to cover uh, light power harness as well as the main wire harness that goes through the bike, the replacement of those parts. Uh, so uh, if you've gotten to this point, more than likely there are a number of troubleshooting steps that we've gone through with you and we've ascertained that 100% either your light cable needs replacement or your power harness needs replacement. Uh, obviously these are internally routed inside the bike so they are a little bit of a finicky job to to kind of replace uh, so hopefully some tools and tricks uh, I'm going to show you here will, will help ease that process. Uh, so number one we'll go through our parts and tools list uh, first of all if you're doing your power harness obviously you're going to need the replacement harness if you're doing the light harness obviously you require a light harness these are somewhat specific from generation to generation, so ensure with us that you've got the right one for your light and you will uh, have some greater success. Um, also a nice idea to have uh, a little stash of zip ties or zip or zap straps depending where you're from. A number one Phillips head screwdriver, that would be the small star head screwdriver. A slotted or flat screwdriver. A set of side cutters. And a set of needle nose pliers. Uh, so this is a fairly straightforward installation. There isn't a lot of tool work here, but uh, again, follow these tips and tricks and hopefully the install will go nice and smoothly for you. So first things first, we've determined on this particular bike that the headlight um, uh, is functional, but the harness is not. We luckily have the, the luxury here of testing it against another bike. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and show that to you here. We're going to power on the bicycle. And if you don't know already, you power on the lights by pushing and holding the plus, and you will see the backlight on the display come up, as well as that little light icon there. So of course that is showing that it's active, and of course we have no front light. Uh, so this obviously would be caused by uh, a few different things. Number one, the light itself doesn't work. Number two, the harness doesn't work. Or number three, perhaps the harness has come unplugged from the controller. Uh, so these, uh, again, so uh, for this particular bike, we've determined that uh, the power harness is to blame. So we're going to go ahead with replacing that. So whenever you're undertaking any electrical work on your bike, obviously it is uh, the norm to remove the battery. Um, as well, once you do remove the battery, there's always a little bit of residual power still left in that harness. So we're going to go through with draining it. So obviously the bike will be turned off. You go ahead and unlock your battery. Most of you should be familiar with how to do that. So on this particular bike, the key enters, turns 90 degrees to one side, and then the handle pulls out 45 degrees and the top comes out. And that should come out there. Now, so that's just step one. Step two, once the bike, or once the battery is out of the bike, we're gonna go ahead and just turn on the display, and that's gonna suck any residual uh, power out of the harness, and you'll see that basically the display will light up and then go back to dark again. Just like that. And now what that's going to do is allow us to work in close proximity of these two prongs here. If you hadn't pulled that residual power of the harness and you touched those two electrodes, then guaranteed you'd probably get a little bit of a spark. Okay, so now that we've ensured that there is no residual power left in the harness, uh, we're going to free up the cables here, the ones that are in question. So, uh, a good way to troubleshoot the system before you go through all the headache of internally routing it is just run it through on the outside first. So in order to do that we're going to have to pull some of the cable harness that's stashed inside the bike from the bottom end of the bike. And so that's where we will take our side cutters. Now obviously here we've got some ideal conditions. We've got the bicycle up in a stand. Uh, I recommend hanging the bicycle if you're doing this from your home. Uh, perhaps you have something you can hang from the ceiling, some heavy duty ratchet straps from here and from the stem will usually suffice. Uh, but either way, you're going to want to access the main cable harness assembly down here and you can see those have obviously been managed with a series of zip ties. So you're going to start to cut those off. Again, be very careful. We don't want to cut any of the wires. We just want to cut the cable ties themselves. So I don't recommend using an X-Acto or any of that for this process because you can slip and lacerate those wires and then who knows what you're going to have to replace from there. So the next step is I will gently tug. I have a little bit of an order that I like to do with this. Um, I start with a cadence sensor. Cadence sensor is the thin wire running to 
this a little magnetic sensor here. I'll start from there and I'll usually gently tug it from the bike. And it seems to be one of the easiest ones to remove. Maybe it was installed last from the factory, I'm not entirely sure. But you can see there's the excess for the cadence sensor. I'll go ahead and pull that out. And then I will proceed for the backlight. And then you can see there's the residual for that harness there. And then from there, I will also grab the next thin wire coming from the controller, which powers the front light. And sometimes these can get a little bit tangled. So you can see this one here is already starting to fight me. Do not tug on these things very hard. If it's fighting you, that means it's caught up somewhere and we're gonna determine where that is very easily. You can also start tugging on the power harness, but if one is stuck, usually that means they're all kind of stuck. This one seems to be coming free a little bit. There it is. So again, now I've gone ahead and disconnected that and the other end of that is stuck into the frame and I'll show you why that is in a moment. But basically we're just going to itemize everything. So there. So the high goes going to the front light will be red. If you've got a bike from 2020 and on, uh, the rear one will be a blue plug. Your cadence sensor will be yellow. So I'm just showing these for visual reference. So again, red will be for your front light. Blue will be for your rear light and brake light. Yellow will be for your cadence sensor. And this fancy little nine pin guy, that is your main harness going up to the display and both the brakes. So the only other wires that are left there would be the main power leads, which you can see those tucked up into the bike here. I'm gonna pull these out for visual reference. That's what those guys look like. Okay, so usually in the troubleshooting process, you wanna make sure all of these are plugged in before we ensure uh, that we actually have to replace the harness. Now, as far as troubleshooting goes, we take our new harness and we will externally route it, which basically means we don't have to worry about feeding it into the bike uh, and obviously troubleshooting that that is uh, the, the, the cause. So for our instance here, we do know that you know uh, the harness is uh, the cause, so I'm just gonna go ahead and proceed with the installation. Now, to make this job a lot easier, I highly recommend removing the lock and power assembly up at the top of the bike. So this is done with three number one Phillips screws. And again, this is very important that you drain the residual harness in, or the residual energy in the harness because if you do touch those two diodes and you haven't, then of course it'll spark and uh, you're not gonna have a good day. So start with the front Phillips bolt just above the, the lock pin right here. So this guy here will remove the cover for the lock-in compartment. I usually just make sure you keep your workspace nice and organized, keep your hardware together so you know what went where. So just keep the screw in that section, put it down to the side, and we can remove this top one and this bottom one. The order doesn't really matter on that. So just make sure you get those out. And again, I won't pull out the hardware entirely. I'll just leave it in place so that we don't mix them up. Uh, so bolts are specific to their location, so just make sure those go back in the exact same spot you found them. Okay, and now we will see one of the cable management techniques that, uh, that our factory uses, and that is utilizing this upper compartment. So if you take a look inside there, hopefully you can see that some of the uh, residual power harness as well as the main harness going up to the front have sort of been tucked in there. Well, that's what's stopping us from being able to pull the cables from the bottom. So from this point, I will free those up uh, from the insert on the bottom of the down tube. So if you wanna look just under here, you'll see there's a rubber grommet inside between the cables and the frame itself that stops the cables uh, insulation from being worn off from the sharp edge of the aluminum and very very simply just take your flathead screwdriver and pry those pry that away now again be gentle take your time if you are distracted get rid of those distractions first once you've got it started it should just pull out by hand just like that and that'll give you a little bit more movability as far as the cables are concerned so if your bike is like this one and it's got the spiral wrap on it, you're going to want to proceed from the top to unwrap all of this. You need to expose that cable in order to work on it. So this comes off and goes on as easy as it looks. So literally just a matter of spinning it around like so. So from here we can now see this is your power harness, this is your light harness, 
and you can actually see if I pull on this, it will sort of come through from that spot at the top. We want to pull all that excess through and free up those cables. And now occasionally you will get them sort of tangling on each other. So you've got to tug as well as look, tug as well as look. You can see how much extra cable is in there. That's obviously contingent for people that have a front rack. We like to have the extra light cable for when we relocate the light. So that's there on purpose. So now you can see we've freed up all that extra tightened cable tension up at the top here almost through again do be careful because there is sharp aluminum in there you can either damage the cables or your fingers if you're not careful so just a little patience a little persistence and you can see I freed that up from there so we're basically going to pull from the top as you can see it will get a little bit stuck as the connector starts to come through don't be shy to use one finger at the top as well as tugging at the bottom and you just basically got to coax it out. And there's your power harness. And we pull out the next one which is the light harness. And there's two. So from here there's also two other lines that run through the bike. One of them is your hydraulic brake line and the other one is your shift cable housing. We're not going to remove those, we're going to keep those in the frame. But in order to make the installation easier for the new cable to go in, I'm gonna grab these and I'm also gonna grab them from the bottom of the frame, as you can see here, and I'm just gonna move them back and forth from the top and the bottom, just to move them over to one side of your cable chute, we'll call it. We'll call it our wire chute for the, for the purposes of this video. So now basically I've got the two lines that are remained in there off to one side so that I've got a nice clear slide for the new harness to be installed. Now the light harness has a thinner gauge wire than the power harness. So it tends to be a lot more pliable. So when I'm installing my cables, whether it be a power harness or light harness, both of them have to come out whether you're installing one or the other. It will make the installation a lot easier, trust me. Start with your light harness to go in first because there's less resistance of uh, another wire being in there. And then you'll go with your power harness first because like I said, this is a lot more of a rigid wire. It'll have a little bit more shoving power should you want to shove it through. So we're going to remove the front end of the light harness from the light like so. We will grab our new light harness. Now the round high go end goes back down towards the controller so you'll start with that end. First things first you want to feed it through the grommet. It's got to be obviously inside there. And now here comes a little bit of the tricky part and this will become even harder with the the main harness as well too. You've got to feed it up in through this hole and make sure that it goes inside that bottom valley and not in the top where the battery tray grows. So you've got to just guide it with your fingers a little bit. Again, try to keep it on the opposite side of where you're feeding your hydraulic and shifter line. Now you can see I've got that basically in there. And it'll stop fighting you. It should basically have a nice, straight, easy shot to go in. You find it's, it's uh, restricted. Don't be shy to grab your hydraulic and your shift line again. Just give them a tug from side to side. That'll move it out of the way and then you notice it'll free up some more space. Again, I'll push more, push more until it feels like it's getting bunged up, which it is again. So I'll grab my shift and my hydraulic line, give that a shake from side to side, pull it over. And then as you can see, it feeds in there much nicer. So just basically keep going until you see that feed through the bottom, which now you do. So that's one with great success. Okay, so now that we've got our uh, headlight harness installed, we're going to proceed next with the power harness. There are a number of pins in the bottom of this connector and they do need to be straight, so be careful uh, when it comes to fishing. Uh, try not to obviously grab the inside of this with a set of pliers from the bottom or any of that sort of thing. Those need to line up perfectly. So again, you're gonna feed it through the grommet first. And because of the overall length and rigidity of this particular connector, getting it into this hole and down in through the bottom channel is a little bit tricky. You will need to sort of feed it in through the top and then shove it down with your finger in order to get it in there. Uh, so just have a little bit of patience and a lot of persistence and you will have a higher degree of success. Uh, in order to stage uh, the space for this particular harness, I will also again try to move the cable arrangement over to the side. So currently on the inside of the frame, we've got our two power wires, our light harness, our hydraulic line, and our shift line. So we've got four cables in here right now. So, so far that's, that's a decent amount of, of things going on. So we want to try to usher those over to one side and simply done by 
grouping them, and the same thing as before, just sort of shaking the whole assembly over to one side. And you can see as I do that, number one, the whole assembly moves up at once, and it kind of moves the power cord over to one side as well, too. It gives you a little bit more probability for success. So let's feed that into the bottom, right through to the top. Again, there are sharp metal edges on the inside of the frame, so just be careful with your fingers as well as the wires themselves. If you feel a little bit of binding, don't be shy. Again, just to sort of jiggle your cable arrangement. You should hopefully be able to start slowly feeding that into the frame. See, I'm doing a jiggle as I feed, and that's just allowing it to go down nice and smoothly. And obviously just keep pulling that down until you see it come through the frame. And there it is. So without any tools, without any fishing wires, without any of that sort of stuff, you can have a high degree of success with this with a little bit of patience and a little bit of technique. From here, everything is plug and play. You cannot plug it the wrong fitting into the wrong thing. We have designed the system uh, in such a way so that it's basically um, you know, foolproof in that regard. So again, blue rear for the rear light. Red is for your front light, yellow is your cadence sensor, and the black 9-pin being your main power, or sorry, your main harness, and the black and red being the power harness up to the, the battery intake. So this is where I like to take a little bit of time and make my cable management nice. So obviously if you've got the cadence sensor wires on one side, well it doesn't make any sense to loop them over on this side, you want to try and keep that as nice and neat and tidy as possible. And then you'll have a nicer, a nicer, uh, compartment organization for this stuff as well too. So blue and blue together. Again, don't let everything tangle up on itself. Keep everything nice and neat. Okay, and probably the most important step before we even think of re-internally wiring this and uh, zip tying it all together and all that kind of stuff is test it. So we're gonna go ahead and replace our positive and negative terminals at the top of the bike. Just put everything back the exact same way you found it. Remember your hardware orientation. Like I said, bolts have their specific spots. I usually start with the top bolt on this one once it draws it in, it will align that one perfectly. So again, number one Phillips, make sure those are good and snug. You don't want your battery vibrating loose. Top one, bottom one. Obviously a stubby screwdriver works very well in this application for this particular bolt. And then of course, our face plate. This goes with the retention label facing up. Those tabs go in like so. Of course, the screw is fighting me here. There we go. Just like that. And it gets fastened down. Okay, so now that we've got all our connectors at the bottom connected, we're going to go ahead and reinsert our battery. Uh, also, don't forget to connect your new harness to the light itself. So the HiGo connector itself has a flat edge and a dented edge. On the dented edge, there is an arrow. The arrow side goes towards the bike, and the flat edge goes out. So there's a little slot inside there. Now, because this is a HiGo connector, there's two separate seating positions. There's in, and then there's seated. You want to make sure it's that secondary seating position to make sure that connection is well established. Then you can fire up your bike. Push and hold your plus, and we have a functional light once again. So then from here, it's just basically a matter of making your cable management nice. Uh, this is something you can take a nice long amount of time for to make it extra sweet. Uh, so you can take your spiral wrapping, reincorporate everything back into itself. 
You can either eliminate this and use some zip ties. It really depends on your personal preference. The grommet, I will say, is a necessary must. And that is simply done by starting at one side, ovalizing it with your fingers. Get as much in as you can. And then use your slotted screwdriver to wedge in the rest. And again, be gentle here. We don't want to damage the harness that we just installed. And just basically work your way around installing that. Just like so. Again, be gentle. Less is more. And that will be your end result there. Now obviously for the bottom of the bike, you can see we've got a lot of excess cabling here. Group your cables together. Cadence sensor stays with cadence. Rear brake stays with rear brake. We wanna manage these. If you've got cable stops here, don't be afraid to zip tie all those back together. But ideally we want as much of this inside the frame as humanly possible. As you can see from the insert at the bottom of the frame here, there's sort of two separate compartments. You've got your lower one where all the battery, or where all the cables are, and then you've got a very small, shallow upper compartment as well too. The rear light and the cable harness for the cadence sensor, I usually put in the top there. So rear light, cadence sensor, group those together and put those in the upper compartment, just like so. That's one. And then of course your rear light and cadence sensor go in the same spot. So these will hold themselves up in there until you get a zip tie, but again, take some time to organize it and make it nice. And there you go like that. Now the rest of it can get shoved in. You can also pull from the top in order to get that tucked in a little nicer there. Obviously try to make sure that stays all connected. So, okay, now of course, once we've got it all tucked up in there, you really wanna kinda of try and keep that cable management up as tight as possible, and I usually just do that by simply cinching it around with zip ties. Again, so that's mostly finished work. You can uh, fiddle around with that as you see fit. Um, the higher up and the tighter in, the better. I think that should just about cover it. If you have any further questions as far as any of these installs, you can always call us on our 1-800 number or you can email us directly. Uh, my email address is ryan at voltbike.com and uh, we'd be glad to, to help, you through, help you out through your process. So hopefully this video was helpful. Uh, thanks for watching.